Welcome to another episode from the Macedon Rangers and District Motor Club. Today we're going back to the club rooms for another Red Plate Day. A Red Plate Day is where a member's car is inspected uh, by qualified mechanics once a year. Now, from time to time little things are found on the car and those items are brought to the attention of the owner. Today's car that we're featuring is owned by Victoria Morris. It was built by Victoria's late husband, Bill. He had a passion for this particular project and it's a credit to Bill and Victoria in maintaining this fantastic car. When Victoria takes it to car shows, it gets a lot of attention, but um, people seriously don't know what it is. They don't have the time to research or look at the, the car. It's a glancing view and it grabs our attention, but that's it. Today's video hopefully will explain more detail of the car and its significance in the uh, British car racing uh, history. The only one of its type in the world, a 1954 Kia DeSoto sports racer. Sit back and enjoy. Lights, blinkers, please. Yep. High beams. Blinker, other side, yep. Blinker on this side. Blinker, the other side, yep. The other, how are they going in the back? Brake lights, reverse lights. No reverse lights. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> you got a handbrake on this? Uh, yeah, I put it in gear too. Oh. Now this DeSoto, was this the same as the Hemi's or not? It is a Hemi. Oh, it is a Hemi. Hemi. Yes, it is. Oh, so they just, well, didn't DeSoto and Chrysler went together at one stage, somewhere on the line? I'm not sure of that. I think that Stick by him, he's still going after it. Yes, yes, exactly. Who, who does it? Uh, the guy called Steve Barnett in Harcourt. He runs a big, well, it's not big. He runs a superb restoration business for old cars. He got over one. Oh, yeah. And he's a, he's a sidecar. Bike racer as well. Yeah. He drives his best to be if I need him. Yeah. Yeah. So he just loves his car. Yeah. I trust him implicitly to make sure it's all right. <laughs> yeah, any reason why that's there? Yes, that's my um, bonnet. Oh, is it? Uh, stick a bonnet on there. <laughs> It's a weird looking car. What's the gearbox? Probably. Ah, twin, twin, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's reverse. Reverse, reverse probably, that's yeah. the main drive, yeah. There's something special about this gearbox. Is there? Victoria, excuse me. 
Can you tell tell Steve about this gearbox? Um, it's a Jaguar one, I think. Crash oh. box. Oh, Crash oh, the Moss or whatever. Yes, the Moss, moss box. gearbox. Why is it yeah. called Moss? Oh, it's just the brand, I think. No idea. Okay. Just, the, just the brand. Just the brand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, um, synchro on second and third and fourth, isn't it? Or none at all. Um, I'm supposed to double this clutch. I know they didn't have it on first. I'm, I'm not sure. No, I don't think yes. She's big, so, so, big exhaust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could have put the exhaust through it, couldn't they? Well, Probably got fuel in there. The guy, the guy who put this together, he's stuck his man. He put stuffies on the Grand Prix car, for God's sake. Do you know what size fuel tank it has? Uh, I think it's quite large. Um, and it's the ideal girl's car, because it doesn't matter which side you pull up at a pump. Because it's either. Oh, yeah, perishing. Unless, no. Um, is that greased? That's right. It is. It's greased. So is this a Jag? So it's really, no, it's not a Jag. It's homemade. Really? It's certainly well constructed. Yeah, because, because it's well done. Yeah, oh, it's, man, oh, man. that's a massive big piece piece of cast iron here. Yeah, the big housing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it handles so well. It, it's. What's to say? Everything's solid. There's no wiggly on rubbers. You don't no. notice it on your car on the road. But on a racetrack, you will. Sure, that's yeah, and the other reason yeah, why they, they they have small rubbers so they don't stress when you're going around, so they are holding less flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that bolt's loose. It is too. Yeah. But I don't want to tighten it up not knowing what's in there. Um, exactly. Victoria, can we have you again, please? Yeah. I don't want to touch anything on this because I don't know what I'm doing. Like but this bolt is loose. So could you show the fellow who does the servicing? Oh yes. Um, I only know it's loose because I can move the washer behind it. Oh right, okay. Um, does it, it need does it need tightening up now? We don't no, know. I don't know. That's oh, okay. why I don't want to do but it. But the other one it's isn't. It's not going to fall off. The other one isn't. We well, don't know if there's a crush tube inside. Yeah. Okay. I'd rather the fellow who works yes, on it because yes, he, he will much. go, why did you let some idiot touch this? No, 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 that's a good idea. <laughs> but it's not going to fall off. Look, that'll never fall off. No. Oh, but, it well, might cause, that, but it might cause wear in a wrong spot. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. That's, any, what any, look, that's what we look for. Well, that's what... That's what <laughs> I'm we're not here listening. to pick on you, we're here to... No, no, I know you're not. Don't worry, I'm used to all this stuff. I'm used to getting picked on you. Big drums. Uh, huge. The Grand Prix car, um, the, okay. the same so, year, okay. it had Lower discs front and rear. Bar. This car's got thrums front and rear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are very large. Has it got power assisted yep. brakes, Victoria? Has no, a, I, don't, so, I don't suppose so for the period. Lower, lower left wishbone, wish um, rear. <laughs> rear. Right, just look up your head. Yeah, no, there's no boosters on this one. Straight out here. There's your clutch master cylinders and all in. That's your, yes. that's your... That's clutch, is it? Yeah, that's clutch. That's interesting, it's hydraulic. It's yeah, all yeah. clutches are, well, most are hydraulic, but that'll, that'll annoy the hell out of me. The rattle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's that noisy you wouldn't hear it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Well, this is mad because it's vibrating. We're going to start talking about the valve, but we thought, ah, that'll be I've turned it straight. Why are you going around and 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 around The Kieft was an intensely interesting project. It was the realisation of the dream of its late owner, historic racer Bill Morris and two talented Australian artisans who brought it to life, bodybuilder Terry Cornelius and mechanic engineer Greg Snape, who did the build and project management. 
Terry's business was in Koroa on the Murray River and Snakes in Yass, in New South Wales. The Erwin Goldschmidt de Soto engine sports racer was built alongside the Formula One car in early 1954. Goldschmidt was a wealthy insurance broker and champion owner driver in the early mid-50s American racing. The Formula One car is the Keeft Grand Prix One. The car was never completed or raced due to the stillborn nature of the Coventry Climax 2.5-litre V8 engine intended to power it. Nearly 50 years later the car was completed with its correct engine by the Morris Snape team in the UK in 2002. Greg had a business in Daniloquin, New South Wales and was getting bored, so he decided to sell it and move to the United Kingdom to get a job in Formula One for a change of scene and pace. Greg rang John Diamond the late owner of Penwright Oil in Melbourne to get a reference and told him what he planned to do. John told Greg historic racer and engineer Bill Morris was in his office and handed the phone over. Bill had lots of contacts and offered to help Greg and said, send your CV, then said you will always have a job with me if all else fails in the United Kingdom. Greg packed up his wife and kids and off they went to Oxfordshire in late 1996. Greg worked for Bill for a few months, then did a season with Alan Docking Racing's Formula 3 team as Mark Webber's number 2 mechanic in 1997. Greg returned to Bill for a couple of years in 1998, then went to the JSM Alpha 147 British Touring Car Team in 2001 as number 1 mechanic on Tim Harvey's car and finally the Castrol Hyundai World Rally Championship Team in 2002 as number 1 transmission technician. Bill ended up with the Keeft Formula One car and bits via a friendship he had with Gordon Chapman who he had known for years via their mutual EI ownership. Unfortunately Gordon died. Bill tried to sell all the bits on behalf of Gordon's widow Jeannie but eventually decided to take it on himself. He asked Greg to work on the project, the deal was that Greg spent half his time rebuilding pre-selector gearboxes for Bill's clients and half the time building up the Keeft Formula One car. Throughout the process of building the Keeft Grand Prix car, Bill was in regular touch with Cyril Keeft, who was both helpful and really keen to see the finished car. During this process Cyril told Bill about the sports racer. Essentially the car was built in the United Kingdom, sent to the US where it was hill-climbed and damaged. It was rebuilt but then stolen in the 1980s and an insurance payout made. It was all said to be a bit sus. But over the years even though some people claim to know where components were Bill couldn't track anything down nor has anyone ever claimed to have the remnants of the car. Bill decided to build a reconstruction of the Keith de Soto using components from the spare original chassis he bought with the F1 project. Keith built three sets of parts for the Grand Prix cars and two chassis. The first car is the one we know and love Grand Prix 1, the second incomplete chassis comprising the main structural tubes with magnesium front bulkhead attached was hanging on rafters in Bill's workshop and ultimately sold together by Victoria. Bill used the compatible components that came with the second Grand Prix car chassis to recreate the sports racer. The sports racer chassis was completely different to the Formula 1 car but the suspension bits, hubs and uprights and magnesium difference housing were the same. The Formula 1 car has Dunlop disc brakes, the same components which went on the Jag C-Type, it stops incredibly well, the brakes on the sports racer are drums, a 13-inch standard girling size on the front and 12-inch Jag components on the back. Both cars share the same cast magnesium wheel rims. The original bodies of both the Grand Prix 1 and sports racer were built by E.W. Humphreys Limited in Wolverhampton, the sports racer then fitted out at Keith's Derry Street, Wolverhampton Works, painted white and exported to the US. The sports racer was installed with a DeSoto Firedome 4.5-litre V8 engine, a Jaguar Moss gearbox with close ratios, the same as the Grand Prix car and a NV rear axle in a Keeft housing. The chassis wasn't straightforward other than the two main frame rails but Duncan Robagliati of the Grand Prix library had some original photos which were invaluable. Whilst the Formula One car was in Australia in 2006-2007 Greg stripped it down and made a jig, and with the photos, allowed to get the chassis and suspension pickup points and therefore the geometry spot on. Bill and Greg knew that it would be great as the Formula One car handled so sweetly and progressively. Terry Cornelius did a sensational job with the body which was all done by looking at photos and building accordingly. 
It is easy to say but much harder to do. Bill's health at this stage was holding up pretty well. He eventually died from progressive supranuclear palsy, similar to MND. Bill and Victoria had a place in country Victoria as well as in the United Kingdom. They lived six months in each and Bill was able to help with direction of the project. Funnily enough, in a tragic kind of a way, when he saw the body for the last time before going back to the United Kingdom where he died, he looked at the body largely by feel. He said to Terry I think the body will crack here, near an intersection of curves at the front of the rear wing, sure enough that's exactly what happened 12 months later. Terry has chosen not to repair the crack as a tribute to Bill's great knowledge of all things automotive. The heart of a car is its engine of course. Goldschmidt specified and provided a new 276 cubic inch 4.5 litre, cast iron overhead valve V8 from DeSoto's new 1952 Firedome family sedan for Keith to fit in his new car. It was DeSoto's first such engine since 1931. The oversquare engine, fitted with hemispherical combustion chamber cylinder heads was state of the art at the time, an engine with high performance characteristics as Motor Trend magazine put it. Modern though it was, in production form it developed around 160 brake horsepower and was heavy by today's standards. The relatively lightweight small block Chev and Ford the 5th 8s with their thin wall casting techniques changed the world of motor racing but they were still a few years away in 1954. But there were plenty of sports cars in the burgeoning US scene using a range of heavy but powerful V8s that pushed Ferrari and Maserati to build cars with progressively bigger engines throughout the 1950s. The Firedome engine is exactly the same as the original car before it left the United Kingdom. It has been lightly modified as was the case with the original, we needed to go that way to be eligible for FIA papers and Bill and Victoria wanted a car they could use on both road and track. It has a set of fabricated extractors, been bored out 40 thou, has 11 to 1 compression ratio and a mild high lift cam. High comp pistons, light rods, oil pump and oversized valves are from Hemi Hotheads in the US. Fed by a two-barrel Rochester carb it develops around 350 brake horsepower at only 4800 rpm, not high but it's undercarbed, the thing has heaps of torque, it's got a big fat torque curve from 2000 to 4500 rpm, bags of grunt and it doesn't weigh much. The leather seats were made by Greg's wife Glenda. It has a full set of matching Smith's instruments. Bill was apprenticed to Smith's originally so knew exactly what instruments were needed for the period inclusive of the lovely chronometric tap. The sports racer has no radio, heater, air conditioner, cup holders, or power steering. Unfortunately whilst Cyril Kieft saw and sat in the F1 car, he didn't get to see the DeSoto Kieft sports racer. Cyril chose the color green for both cars. Cyril being a proud Welshman also adorned his cars with the red dragon. The Welsh flag is white and green with the red dragon. Bill sadly passed away just before Terry and Greg finished the car about a week before its race debut at historic Winton in 2009. Victoria was keen to fulfill Bill's dream to reunite the two Keefts at the Goodwood Revival in the United Kingdom, so she shipped the car to the United Kingdom and Greg raced it at Donington Park and at the Goodwood Revival meeting in September 2009. It's really quick in a straight line, capable of 150 miles power and clocked at 132 miles power at Goodwood but the suspension needed more sorting. No big deal, just spring and shock settings, the sort of stuff which would have been sorted if the car was to be a racer rather than a road car and which occasionally does a meeting. It holds the road well. While in the UK, Victoria, family and friends gathered for a very emotional moment with the sports racer, to say goodbye to Bill. When the car came back to Australia we ran it at an HSRCA meeting at Eastern Creek, out to Sydney's west. As well as making an appearance at the Melbourne Grand Prix and Tarangower Hill Climb. Here in Australia it is raced by friends at many race meetings and is driven by Victoria whenever possible on the roads and to car events. Wow, what a story. I'd like to thank Victoria for her help in putting this video together. The story about the Keefe DeSoto sports racer. 
and when it went to America and only raced, we believe, once by Erwin Goldsmith at a hill climb. It was damaged somewhere. Anyhow, there was a conversation made in 1990 from a chap in Florida stating that he knew where the car was. It's in a hangar and the body is damaged. Well, since then, the whole story has gone cold. Let's see if we can find the Keith DeSoto sports racer.